Hello, my name is Yoshi Takagoto, and my project is called Endophyte Assisted Phytoremediation of Trinitrotoluene in Tall Fescue Grass with PTA1. Phytoremediation is a remediation of contaminated areas using plants. In other words, it is plant bioremediation. Plants can be utilized in many ways to remediate the environment. Some common methods are phytoextraction and phytodegradation. Phytoextraction is the uptake of contaminants into plants, but phytodegradation takes it a step further. These contaminants in the plants are further degraded into less harmful or harmless substances. Phytoextraction is gaining interest in an innovative, green, and cheap alternative to conventional engineering methods of remediation. Some methods such as, such as incineration of soil or capping soil can be environmentally unfriendly, very in invasive, and expensive. Plants can act as a pump and treat system that is natural, solar, and automatic. It is a new field started really in the 90s but already shows many advantages. According to the EPA, currently 6 to 8 billion is used per year in the US for remediation efforts, and an estimated 25 to 50 billion is used worldwide. The biggest advantage of phytoremediation is that it can reduce prices by 50 to 80 percent. Explosives are one class of contaminants existing today. Two of the most common are TNT and RDX. Uh, their chemical structures are shown here. Both are still used in military applications. And while most imagine explosives as bombs and cases, they're actually man-made chemicals that are very toxic. Both chemicals are identified as priority pollutants and possible human carcinogens by the EPA. TNT sh tested in labs show that it is toxic to all organisms so far, can and they can cause anemia or chlorosis in plants. RDX is less toxic, but it is known to cause disruptions in the, in the nervous system. But RDX is more mobile and leaches into water, while TNT does not, making it a very serious problem. TNT and RDX are both present in unexploded ordnance and contaminate soil and water. Unexploded ordnance are basically unused ammunitions or ammunitions that are in storage. In 2003, the U.S. Department of Defense estimated that cleanup of unexploded ammunition supplies and remnants in its active ranges, ranges can, are, are totaled to be 24.6 million acres and would cost 16 to 165 billion dollars. In addition, it was estimated that close, closed ranges could have more than 15 million acres of contamination by explosives. The main problem when applying phytoremediation to explosives contamination is that most plants will die before they can start to phytoremediate. One proposed solution is to use transgenic plants, which are plants that have been transformed with foreign genes. Elizabeth Rylett from the University of York in the UK and her colleagues transformed Arabidopsis plants with the XPLA and NR genes taken from the bacteria used in bioremediation and produced successful results. These plants were grown in liquid culture with TNT at different concentrations. These are the results shown here. It was also grown in RDX which showed even better results. Soil assays show a di significant difference between wild type plants and transgenics. Studies for phytoremediation using transgenics are now being done in many places. But the genetic transformation of plants have potential and unknown risks, especially in a long-term setting. No one knows how transgenics will affect the environment since they are like completely different species. Thus, endophytes are now seen as an alternative solution to phytoremediation of explosives. Endophytes are bacteria that live within plant tissue and form a mutualistic or commensalistic relationship with the plant. Endophytes are known to enhance gro plant growth, increase plant tolerance to contaminants, and extract or degrade con contaminants. In 2004, Ben Atkins' lab from the University of Iowa isolated an endophyte identified as methylobacterium strain BJ001 from hybrid poplar that could, trans that could transform both contaminants into carbon dioxide, the first endophyte discovered that could do this. Since then, several more endophytes isolated from poplar have shown resistance to explosives. Recently, Dr. Khan isolated an endophyte from hybrid poplar identified as a pseudomonas strain called PTA1. 
A trial testing inoculation of PTA1 inside California biome grass has been successful and inoculated grasses grew better than uninoculated grasses. In my experiment, I chose to test six different tall fescue grasses for inoculation by PTA1, its effect on TNT tolerance, and phytodegradation by PTA1 of TNT. Tall fescue grasses are grown nationwide as a hardy and low-maintenance grass and is used in the military. It also has been used in phytoremediation experiments before. I hypothesized based on previous experiments that inoculation will be successful, inoculated samples will show better health, and TNT concentration in soil will decrease while TNT concentration will actually rise in plant matter. So far I have set up the experiment and am currently running it. First, TNT, which is this yellow white powdery substance here, has been uh, dissolved into an, an acetone solution. Uh, TNT is nonpolar, so it doesn't dissolve very well in water, but it can dissolve readily in acetone. This acetone TNT solution was poured into sand and mixed together and then left in the fume hood for overnight so that the acetone could dry out and it would be only sand and TNT. This was mixed into a large batch of soil so that the concentration of the TNT would be at 100 milligrams per kilogram. This batch of soil was then uh, split into each pot that I was using. My experiment had to be run in triplicate, which means that I had to have three copies. So basically, um, e each tray represents uh, six different varieties, and since I had to be in triplicate with four groups, there are 12 different trays. For the inoculum, I first extracted PTA1 from a culture, mixed it into MGL media, and did the same with con the control, except I just had MGL media with water in it. Uh, seeds were measured to 1 gram and then put into soil and then the PTA1 media or the control was poured onto the seeds. This was done for all the pots that I had. In the beginning, I took half a gram of the soil to test out for HPLC anal analysis later on. This will be done at the end of the experiment as well. So right now since I'm running it, I do not have a lot of stat statistical data yet or final data yet, um, but harvesting will be done this weekend. Um, actually, this might actually be delayed to next weekend to allow the plants to grow more. Um, but this is qualitative data based on photos that I have here. But there is still a noticeable difference between the inoculated samples and the uninoculated samples. The inoculated samples had more shoot volume in, on average they looked a bit, little bit more greener and healthier and also had uh, a little bit of a taller shoot length. In the past experiment which I ran with uh, a different variety of grasses, this was not the case. Um, in this previous experiment, I had a higher dosage of TNT and also introduced a chemical called DMSO which was toxic in itself. I think that this DMSO actually uh, stunted the growth of the grasses and actually skewed the results in this previous experiment. This experiment has a little bit of a lower dosage, but has been shown in journals to still be at a toxic and lethal uh, dosage to a lot of uh, different plants. Since TNT mostly stays in roots, the most significant data will probably be after harvesting. The HPLC analysis will be interesting to see as well. Previous experiments did not have concentration analysis due to the lack of an HPLC machine in, a, in my lab. SPAD measurements, which are chlorophyll counts of the leaves, wet and dry weight data, length, shoot count, and concentration are all going to be uh, data that I take after harvesting. I'd like to thank Dr. Sharon Dotti, who is my mentor for this project and also is an assistant professor in the School of Environmental and Forest Sciences. She's a principal investigator at her lab, and also Dr. Khan, who is a lab technician who has helped me so much, and of course, the rest of the Dari lab, which includes more than 20 students, some of them who I have listed here. Ms. Goldowski and Ms. Strachan are both teachers from my current school that I attend, Meadowdale High School, and I would like to extend my thanks to them. Ms. Holmes, is my teacher from my previous school in New York who has introduced me to this world of science research and of course my parents for all their support and finally thank you for listening to my presentation